Hey and welcome back to freefellowshop.com and this free video tutorial looking at how to apply a professional level high quality effect to portrait images. It's something that I refer to here at freefellowshop.com as the portrait effect. Now even though this particular technique has been around for three years now, I'm going to show you how to achieve it for three reasons. Firstly, it's effective. You're going to have people believing that your photograph was actually taken in a professional studio environment. Secondly, it's really easy to pull off. And finally, as far as I've seen around the web, it's not an overly used technique. OK, I'm going to start off here inside Photoshop. I already have this image opened up and ready to roll. It's a photograph, by the way, that I downloaded from the Stock Exchange website a completely free online resource for photographic images, a website that I use all the time incidentally. And I'll make sure, just in case you want to download the image yourself or have a look around the website, that I have a link to it on my website, that's freephotoshop.com. For now I'm going to quit talking about it and start doing it. So without any further ado, I'm going to start off by duplicating this layer over here in the Layers palette by just dragging it down onto the new layer icon like so. And just to keep things tidy, I'm going to name this layer Blur. Just a good way to work here inside Photoshop, a good habit to get into. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a blur by coming up here to the filter menu, selecting Blur, and then selecting one of the best blurring filters available here inside Photoshop, and that's the Gaussian Blur filter. Now, the amount of blur you're going to add will depend on the size of your image. A good starting point would be to use a radius value that's equal or slightly below that of the image size in megapixels. And if you're not sure what your image measures in the way of megapixels, then you can come up here to the image menu and select the image size command and then take the dimensions of the image from that dialog box. So that's the width and the height and multiply them together to give you the megapixel value. So in the case of this particular image that I'm working with here, we have what is approximately a 12 megapixel photograph. So I'm going to enter a, a radius value here of say 12 pixels and then click OK. Next I'm going to switch the blending mode of the blur layer to soft light. And that's going to bring that contrast up just a notch but we want to heighten that effect, so I'm going to make sure that the blur layer is active. Then I'll hold down the Alt key here on the PC, that's the Option key on the Mac, and I'll select the Adjustment Layer icon down here at the bottom of the Layers palette, and from the menu, I'm going to go for the Levels command. So I'll go ahead and call our new Levels adjustment Added Contrast, and because I only want this adjustment layer to affect the blur layer underneath, I'm going to turn this little checkbox on and then hit OK. Now I'd always recommend trying your own settings, but some really good default values to use here when in doubt is to increase the white point slider to a value of 45, and then decrease the black point slider to a value of 210, and then just hit OK like so. Now finally, I'm going to select the blur layer, or make sure it's selected in the layers palette like so, and just try lowering the opacity a little, just until we get something that looks good on screen. I'd say around about 60% here gives us a nice effect for this particular image. Of course, every photograph and every image that you work on is going to be different, so you may need to go a little bit more, or perhaps not quite as far. Whichever way it is though, just make sure you've got things looking good on screen and everything will work out perfect. So just a comparison to see how far we've come, I'm going to show you the original image as downloaded from the Stock Exchange website and then the edited version of the image after applying what I like to call the portrait effect. And I'd say that looks pretty nice. Well thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com I'll see you next time.